In this section, let's talk about the low pressure compressor, the LPC. This is a five stage axial flow compressor and its purpose is to create a boost for the HPC. The reason why we create this boost is again, we're trying to squeeze as much power in a smaller package as possible because again, this is designed for flight. Okay, here we have a unique opportunity of an engine that came in for service. This engine here actually has a VIGV, Variable Inlet Guide Vane. A Variable Inlet Guide Vane just directs air, a smooth transition of air into the low pressure compressor. This is the low pressure compressor, which is a five stage axial flow compressor, but the inlet guide vane just allows a smooth transition of airflow into the compressor itself. It is not a stage of compression, it just allows a smooth flow of air. This is a variable, that's why it's called the VIGV, and this is the actuator that actually moves this ring and allows that uh, variable inlet guide vane to pivot. Here again, we have a unique opportunity to look at an engine that came in for service work. This particular engine doesn't have the VIGV, variable inlet guide vane. It has a fixed inlet guide vane. Inlet guide vane, it still allows a smooth transition of airflow into the compressor, but as you can see on the outer case here, there is no actuator. This is a later model and uh, the, the, ver the variable inlet guide vane that I showed you on the previous uh, video is typically on the older models and even there's a modification that they have those uh, veins pinned at a negative five degrees, but that is the older model. The low pressure compressor is a five stage axial flow compressor using a five stage fixed stator. The low pressure compressor stator veins are a fixed configuration. Let's talk about the components of the low pressure compressor. Here you will have a VIGV assembly. The VIGV assembly is variable inlet guide vanes. It will allow air to be varied coming into the uh, low pressure compressor, acting like a choke. The low pressure compressor rotor is the uh, rotor that actually rotates with the blades mounted on top of it. The blades are mounted uh, by a dovetail mount and uh, they're either an actual dovetail or a circumferential dovetail. The rotor itself is made up of disc and spools. The disc will take the actual mounts and the spool piece will make the will take the circumferential mounts. The stator case which houses your vein assemblies and your vein assemblies is what's going to cause that resistance to flow and cause an increase in pressure in your compressor and your Low pressure stator case has an upper and a lower half, and you also have an LPC aft case. These cases will, call, will uh, create the support structure for the low pressure compressor and the mounting to the low or the uh, compressor front frame. The comp front frame is the structure for the sump area. We'll get into more of the compressor dynamics in a little bit later. The aerodynamics of the compressor section. Let's look at this diagram. Here we have two colors basically, a yellow and a red. The yellow is the stator case which encompasses the stator veins. The stator veins are fixed. They do not rotate or move. Now they may pivot if it's a variable stator vein, but in this particular drawing there's no variable stator veins. The red component is your rotor and the blades that are attached to the rotor. The rule is one stage comp it consists of one set of blades followed by one set of veins. So as the blades rotate, the blade itself in this area creates a low pressure area. So the low pressure area will allow air to come in and it pushes, increases the velocity and throws it onto the fixed vein. The vein is fixed and it's going to cause a resistance to flow. That resistance to flow will cause a pressure rise. It also causes a temperature increase as well. This will happen 
over and over and over again through the stages of compression. As the air flows through the compressor, you can see that the volume that's here in the front of the compressor, it gets squeezed into a smaller area in the rear of the compressor. So volume decreases through the stage of compression and through the compressor itself. Pressure will actually increase through the rotor or the compressor. Temperature increases as well. Your velocity will also increase. This is your air collector and this is where your VBVs are. And your VBVs, variable bypass veins, are actually inside here on the compressor front frame. And you can see it from, from here, you'll actually, they're connected by bell cranks and actuators. And that is driven from your hydraulic control unit. And it's actually the air between the low pressure compressor and the high pressure compressor. Basically at low speeds or when you have a, a trip on the generator breaker, you want that to open up and relieve the air from the high pressure compressor. Okay, here's a great opportunity to see the compressor front frame. It's actually facing downward, and this is the 12 o'clock position, and over there is your 6 o'clock. You can see the VBV doors mounted actually, circumferentially, all the way around the compressor front frame. There's 12 of these doors, and there's 6 actuators. The actuators are mounted at 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 11 o'clock. Let's talk about the uh, low pressure compressor bleed air collector, or the VBV. The VBV, there's 12 of these mounted circumferentially around the compressor front frame. And the reason why they're there is they're in between the low pressure compressor and the high pressure compressor. And basically during low speeds, remember the low pressure compressor is like a boost, like a turbo booster. So at low speeds, we don't need all that volume of air, so we got to vent it somewhere. So these doors will open up and allow all that air to be vented through this air collector to the roof of the uh, package. This is actually a nice uh, picture of that, uh, those uh, bypass doors that's connected by a bell crank and an actuator ring, and you have six actuators, which uh, I, pre I previously showed you uh, when I was out in the shop looking at this. But um, basically, you're just relieving some of that pressure between the two compressors during low speeds or a startup. Okay, in this section, I will talk about the accessory gearbox. The accessory gearbox is mounted 6 o'clock on the compressor front frame. And we'll talk about the frames and the mounts and the references of the gas turbine engine in a later section. Okay, imagine this is connected to your air collector and right above it is your HPC, your high pressure compressor. You have an inlet gearbox that looks very similar to the bevel gears here but inside your A sump. And that is connected through a radial drive shaft to this transfer gearbox. So as the gas generator is rotating, it's converting that rotation motion 90 degrees this way and then converts it back 90 degrees actually. And what I mean by actually is actual from the shaft of the gas generator above to these gears in the back. So we actually convert that motion from the gas turbine spinning above to drive these accessories down below. It is also used for the starter when you first engage the starter from a stop motion I can convert torque and drive the generator, the gas generator, for rotation or a crank. Okay, your accessory gearbox, it's um, mounted 6 o'clock of your compressor front frame. It's actually mounted on your air collector. But your accessory gearbox is a, um, a mounting pad where your starter motor, your uh, lube and scavenge pump, uh, variable geometry control unit, all of these attachments are attached to that gearbox 
So when the engine is running, we can transfer power from the high-speed shaft through an inlet gearbox, through a radial drive shaft, which you see right here in this picture, through a TGB or transfer gearbox to the accessory gearbox. The accessory gearbox is the AGB, transfer gearbox, we call it the TGB, the radial drive shaft, and up in the sump area of the compressor front frame is the inlet gearbox, which we call the IGB. Basically, the IGB and the TGB work very similar. They're just a set of bevel gears to convert a, uh, a, uh, a, a radial uh, motion to an axial motion. So uh, it's converting you know, uh, torque and power 90 degrees, right? But it's just a transfer of power. During startup, we use the starter to transfer power up to the high-speed shaft. Once the engine's running, the high-speed shaft transfers power down to the accessory gearbox to drive the accessories. It's as simple as that. Okay, this is the AGB, the accessory gearbox. This is mounted 6 o'clock on the air collector underneath the HPC. It is actually connected to the HPC via this transfer gearbox which is a function of converting a 90 degree rotation to a, an actual rotation. It's a set of bevel gears up here. The AGB, this longer case here, is, has spur gears separated by idle gears so we can connect accessories. These accessories are such like the hydraulic control pump, the lube and scavenge pump, and a starter right here in the back. Of course, the starter's not here, but the starter would mount right here. You will also have a bracket here that you can actually take this cover off and connect a drive to it and rotate the compressor, the HPC, as you do a bore scope. The, low, the lube and scavenge pump has uh, six elements and one supply six scavenge elements and one supply element. But basically, these elements down here, this is where your chip detectors are. You have your transfer gearbox, scavenge pump, your B sump, your C sump, this is your E sump, and over here is your B sump and your AGB oil. Your oil inlet comes in on this port right here. That's your oil inlet, and that comes right from the tank. Then, the mat, the, this big block up here is nothing but a manifold. Your oil will come out into this mixing block and into your hydraulic pump. Your hydraulic pump has your hydraulic control unit, which drives your VSVs, your VIGV, your variable inlet guide vane, your VSVs, which are your variable stator vanes, and your VBV, your variable bleed doors. And uh, your hydraulics is connected to these ports. And it also has your filter for hydraulic. And going back to your lube and scavenge pump, you'll have your scavenge line coming out from this port here back to your filters, your lube and scavenge filters before it goes to your cooler and then back to the tank.